last week I was building this little cockpit platform to make making these easier and it has done I've been drilling off camera because you probably saw enough of that last week but uh, these engine sleds have a little pulley system so you can raise and lower the engines and originally I put the pulley system on these back braces but now that I've put these cross supports in I will take the anchor point for the pulley system from here then I think it's going to be easier to pull from here and hopefully I can start building the rest of the deck and so it starts to look a little bit less of a project. So the question is, how much does this hole weaken this piece? <laughs> it's uh, 20 mil wide and I've put an 8 mil hole through. So I'm well happy with that. Now that this mechanism is away from the beam and away from this bit, it fl flows so much cleaner. This, I'll, I'll just use this for lifting the engines. When the engines are up, the force will be on these two bars. When I lower it down though, there will be an extra rope here, which just goes to the beam so that when the engine's down, all the force is actually on the beam and I'll put a little bit of tension on this as well so it's spread evenly between the beams and the cage. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that it's going to be good. Good bit of mechanical advantage there. <laughs> uh, I just need to do the exact same on the other side. Last week I was struggling with my outboard and I started to think that it was maybe a carb issue but I've had it running again. It's quite lumpy though so I still think there's a problem with air going around it. I've got a new little fuel filter and a little fuel line attachment. I'm going to see if it helps. I think I might have sorted out the fuel line problem, but there is a problem with the carburetor. It won't go into high revs. So there's a couple of different jets for the different rev ranges. And I'm guessing that's blocked or something. So I'll have to take the carb off. So Peter, who owns the Warham catamaran next to me, is gonna lend me his car. Once I get the car, I can get a load of the bits to continue working on the deck. But for now, I'll just take this carb off and have a look. Loads of sludge. Seems like the float could also be getting stuck. It just gets stuck.
news is the engine is sweet as a nut. Bad news is it's way overpowered for this dinghy. I did manage to get it on the plane once, but it's really scary. Looks like perhaps the Amsterdam port boat got stuck. <laughs> anyway, Peter's here and uh, we're gonna go pick up his car. Then I'll be able to go hardware stuff shopping easier, perhaps get a new mattress. <laughs> so I now have the use of a car, which is <laughs> helpful. I went out last night, got what I needed to finish off the engine lowering thing on here. So here we have a double block and line snatcher. Up here, a double block. Yeah, there's a lot of these left over uh, from the previous owner. Don't know what material they are and whether they're any good, but I use these on the bottom of the engine box. Oh no. So I was talking a little bit last week about upgrading the M10 bolts to M12 bolts for extra strength. A few people have mentioned in the comments and also a friend of mine said that the tensile strength of an M10 bolt is enough to lift a small car. So there should not be a problem with using M10 bolts. And I'm not going to change them to M12 for the meantime, but I would like to get your opinion. If we say for argument's sake and probably overestimating that the wood, the metal uh, weighs say let's say 120 kilos and then the engines would be 80 kilos on top of that so let's say 200 kilos would the 8 M10 bolts under this sort of stress and pressure will they be okay? If there's any engineers in the comments let me know. I would say it's about 200 kilos altogether let's say two to 300 kilos. <laughs> and of course, we've got people that will be standing on this cockpit platform, although I will make a seat at deck level so that not, you know. Oh, and also fuel tanks and stuff. <laughs> what do you reckon? <laughs> what I have been told is that it probably won't be the M10 bolts that fail. It will be the box section because it's compressed together. Where possible, I've put sheathing, which stops the tube from compressing uh, but that's not always easy to do, especially if the hole going through the profile is in the middle of the, the thing you can't get your fingers in to get the sheath on. Let me know what you think. I'm not just fishing for comments, it's, it's genuine, it's something I think about a lot. <laughs> that was not scripted, flipping heck. Oh, oh my knee. <laughs> I literally just moved that plank so I can get to the lashing because I'm going to just put the lashings on this mass beam. Yeah, when I was going to retrieve my dinghy, I've just walked through the deck. But it does scare me walking around and it scares me when I've got my parents here if they make one wrong step. It's whoa, adrenaline. I almost lost my headphones to Neptune as well. So I'm just gonna go super basic, planks on top of the beams. In the plans, the decks are actually just raised below beam level. To have them like that though, I would have to screw little battens sort of into the beam for them to sit on. It's my quest though to put as few screws into the beams as possible. That's the whole reason for the engine cage thing. I just don't want to screw into the beam. I just want all the deck pieces to go on top. There are places where the lashings create a bump, so I'm just going to get my hammer and chisel out. I could do it with a router, but I'll just get my hammer and chisel out and just hammer out a divot. These planks I've been using for like the last year pretty much, well half of them, uh, just to get work done on the boat safely. <laughs> But I'm, I'm gonna continue using them. There's no use throwing them away and getting fancy wood. I'm just gonna build a functional deck. And what you'll see 
a lot in this refit is just function over aesthetic. So I've marked off where the lashings are on the other side because I'm doing everything upside down and then I'll flip it over and fingers crossed it'll fit. Last night's chicken nuggets. Here in the Netherlands at McDonald's, you have to pay extra for sauce. It's 80 cents for sauce. Little life hack, snag yourself some chicken nuggets and you get a free sauce with the chicken nuggets. So yeah, McDonald's, controversial, but sometimes it's just what you need. Planks are all laying flat on the beam. I have a bit of excess there at the front which I need to cut off. But yeah, they feel a lot stronger. I've also pretty much gone for no gap so nothing can fall through. And what I will do is I'll put holes in them and then lash them together. Well, I'm gonna trim up all this one and then make a start on this gap here with one big piece that goes across. Today was just perfect perfect temperature sunny all day and yeah it's been a really good day's work absolutely knackered now so i'll have some tea and then i have a full day tomorrow doesn't look like it's gonna rain i can build this up a little bit maybe neaten it up the mast beam was covered in a tarp but turns out there's a hole in the tarp so um, it got a little bit wet and that's also made out of douglas fir it's the same material as these planks it's such a good material.
dry for almost two days. It's just started raining now. It's five to six and it's about to get dark anyway. And I'm down to my last two planks of Douglas fir. Yeah, when I went to put this back on, I realized I need to cut out a little notch there because it doesn't slide in because I put it all in as separate planks. I mean, it's pretty sturdy. All the planks are different colors. It's a little bit ugly, but once they're all sanded down, I'll put some sort of protection on them, some oil or something once I've done everything. And yeah, it's a bit of a work in progress. I really thought I'd get more done in this episode, but uh, things just really take a long time, uh, a lot longer than you expect. If you do have any information on this cage and whether you think that the M10 bolts will be okay, as long as I put the spaces in, let me know if there's any engineers. I was absolutely chucking it down for the next couple of days, but luckily they're my editing days. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much uh, for liking and commenting on the last video. Um, that was quite popular. So thank you very, very much. And of course, thank you to all my patrons, uh, my PayPalers, coffee givers, uh, super thanks uh, people who just do it directly through YouTube. Thank you so much. This project is all literally because of you. Next week, hopefully I'll complete this with the engine lids and I think the forecast is not very good though, so I might have to do some work on the interior. We'll see. But yeah, next Friday, 9 p.m. European time, 8 p.m. UK time. I'll see you then. Thanks again for watching. Goodbye.